Notebook LM from Google just came out, and you could use it to talk to your Google Doc, Google Slide, website material, YouTube video, or any text. Not only can it respond to in text, but it can also generate a voice output of a conversation between two people. Let's take a look at how it works and see if it can break down this Google pattern on the Oren AR glasses from Meta. If you're new to my channel, I teach robotics and AI, so subscribe to learn more. So this past weekend, I started digging into more information about the Oren AR glasses because I was very curious about exactly how it works. So I found this Google Patent here from the Google Patents website. And as you guys know, Google Patents or Patents in general are very difficult to digest. I thought it might be pretty cool to take a look at to see if the Notebook LM can digest this and make it a little bit easier to understand. So let's go ahead and check it out and see how it works. So when you go to their website, you want to click up here the Try Notebook LM, and this will take you to this other page. So you could go ahead and check out some example notebooks that already exist. You could create a new notebook, or I'm going to use the one that I just created. So here on the left, you could go ahead and input as many resources that you, as you would like. So you could um, put Google Doc drives, your own documents, uh, a link to a website or YouTube video, or even plain text. So you could go ahead and put whatever resources you'd like. And here, um, you could view here, there's the notebook guide. So this notebook guide, it has different parts. It has a FAQ, study guide, table of contents, timeline, and a briefing doc. So you could choose different things to have it create. And then you could also have an audio overview, which we'll show you in a little bit. And then down here, you can also chat with your documents. So you could view your chat and ask any questions. It'll give you some suggestions about some questions to ask. So let's take a look at one of them right here. It says, explain the challenges in manufacturing emitter array uh, without faulty emitters and how some embodiments address these issues. So you can see here, it gives you a summary about it. One of the challenges in manufacturing emitter arrays is creating arrays without faulty or defective emitters, especially when the individual emitters are, are very small. So you can see it goes into some details about it. Um, you can see several embodiments address this challenge by identifying the location of faulty emitters, um, actuating a neighboring emitter or set the emitters when the emitter array moves to a second position, and so on. So you can see it starts getting into the details of that. Um, but here you can see I've generated some of the example uh, options that it has here. So let's take a look at this one here. This is a briefing doc. So you can see it, it has introduction, a key innovation, uh, system components. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see that there's an advantage over existing technology. So notice it says here, enhanced resolution, improve image quality, wider FOV, uh, reduce screen door effect. So right here it says a pattern proposes introducing small vibrations to the emitter using me mechanisms like piezo structures or actuated liquid crystal layers to mitigate the screen door effect, improving image perception. So let's say you didn't know what screen door effect is. So I'm going to say, what is screen door effect? And let's see what it says. So this is a really good way to have a conversation with your document, and you could have a deeper understanding as well as easier to understand. So here you can see the sources provided do not explicitly define screen door effect. However, they do discuss a challenge in near eye display NED design that may be related to what is commonly referred to as screen door effect. So you can see here that it seems to be pretty uh, localized to the document, which can be good or bad. Um, but here you can see that it kind of mentions a little bit. So it has a guess, but you can see that if it doesn't explicitly define something in your document, it's not going to have knowledge of it. So in a way, this is good because it won't actually hallucinate information and just actually give you answers based off of what your document has. So it's like a pro and con. So if it's out of context, you might have to search on it by yourself. So that was the briefing doc. Uh, let's take a look at this other one here. This one is the quiz, like a FAQ type like a study guide type of thing. So it can give you some questions and then some answers to it. So you can see here, uh, let's take a look at one of these questions here. So it says, how does the waveguide configuration contribute to producing a polychromatic image? So number two here says, the waveguide configuration combines multiple 
multiple monochromatic images, red, green, blue emitted from separate emitter arrays. This combination facilitate, facilitated by coupling and decoupling elements within the waveguide produces a final polychromatic image. So you can see here, this is very nice. It breaks down uh, little things. And yeah, it gives you a lot more detail and structure in terms of how you could read this document. And then here, so that was the study guide one. Um, this one here, you can see this is the FAQ. So this FAQ here, you can see it again, gives you some questions and answers. And then this right here is a table of contents. So it gives you like a summary of everything. So that might be pretty useful. And here, this was, I think, a timeline that I created earlier. Uh, but let's see the final thing that's probably the most interesting here. So if I go back to the notebook guide, um, I've already tried to generate the audio, so it's going to show up faster this time around. But let's take a look at how it performs in terms of the audio. But what this audio will do is it's going to have a conversation between the two people. So let's listen to how it sounds. Okay, so ready to dive into some seriously cool tech. Always. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the future of displays. Think augmented reality. Think virtual reality, basically. How we're going to be seeing digital information in the years to come. Sounds right up our alley. We're looking at a patent from Google. And let me tell you, it is packed with fascinating details about their vision for next-gen near-eye displays. You know those bulky VR headsets everyone's trying to shrink down? Yeah, definitely. Imagine if you could get that same immersive experience from a sleek pair of glasses. That's where this patent comes in. The dream. Exactly. But as we know, turning a dream into reality takes some serious engineering. For sure. So one thing I want to comment on is that this audio overview of what's happening, what's really good about this is that it explains everything in a very conversational and casual way. So it really helps the user digest something that's very technical. So that's a big plus about it. And especially depending on the type of learner you are, if you're like an audio learner or a visual learner, um, this could be a great way if you're more of a visual or audio person. Sure. And when it comes to near eye displays, one of the biggest hurdles is image quality. Right. Because what good is a super sleek headset if the picture's a blurry mess? Exactly. It's kind of like trying to watch a movie through a screen door. You can sort of make out the picture, but you're mostly distracted by that annoying mesh in between. Ah, the dreaded screen door effect. I've heard about that. Yep, that's the one. And it's a major obstacle for making AR VR truly immersive. So how does Google propose we get past so this part is actually kind of interesting because now it started mentioning the screen door effect and actually explains it, which says it has like a mesh effect. So I'm very curious why the chat earlier didn't talk about it, but this audio overview did. So that's very interesting. This, we can't exactly shrink pixels down to the size of atoms, can we? Not yet anyway, but that's what <laughs> I love about this patent. They're tackling the image quality problem in a completely new way. This isn't about making pixels smaller, it's about rethinking the whole system. Okay, now you've got me intrigued. What's their secret sauce? It's all about micro LEDs and waveguides. All right, time for a quick tech breakdown. What exactly are micro LEDs and waveguides and what makes them so special for this kind of display? So picture the tiniest LEDs you can possibly imagine, like seriously microscopic. Smaller than a pinhead. Way smaller. We're talking smaller than a fraction of a human hair. These are micro LEDs, and they're capable of emitting incredibly pure, bright light. Okay, I'm picturing it. Tiny points of super bright light. What's next? Now, instead of cramming all the different colors into a single tiny pixel, like most displays, Google's patent describes using separate arrays of these micro LEDs for each primary color, red, green, and blue. Interesting. So instead of a bunch of tiny dots all trying to mix together to make different colors, it's more like having three separate projectors, each responsible for just one color. So overall, you can see that it does a very good job explaining something very technical. So go ahead and check it out for yourself and see how you like it. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.